Hey everybody, this is Conrad Wilton here inside the Annenberg Radio News Studio alongside Carla Robinson, who is not your average sophomore journalism major. We're here to hear all about your professional aspirations in the music industry. Carla, thank you for coming on Conrad's Corner. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. So you've been in this booth before. I mean, as a journalism major, we were just talking about this. You've worked with ARN and all those great people. Yes, I, I did. Yes, yes. Okay. So, but you also have a very interesting gig here as you're a country rock singer. Yes, and I am. songwriter, <laughs> which is really cool. Uh, tell me a little bit about that. Like, when did you start singing? Well, I've been singing pretty much as soon as I could talk, or before, I guess, if you can count, like, humming and whatnot. So, um, it counts for me. By the way, so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so I um, didn't start taking lessons until I was about in the fifth grade or so, um, but I've always been interested in singing, and I come from a fairly, like, musical family. My dad was very musically inclined, um, and so we always did, like, the little family get-togethers and family rehearsals and recitals and everything, so that was fun. Um, so and you're saying your family was talented enough to actually make music. Yeah. Yes, yeah, wow, crazy. Cool. So I inherited it from someone. I suppose, <laughs> I suppose. Okay, and, but why country rock? Why, why that genre? Um, well, I feel that uh, I was originally into pop music growing up a lot, and then I felt that I wanted to say more as an artist. I wanted to have a, a better message, and I think country speaks to, like, um, great stories and then they you know it's, it has a larger message and so I relate to those stories much more than I do the typical like dancing pop theme idea right and we all have a lot of that on the radio now yeah again, so, so I don't idea. need to add any more they have the dancing cover theme covered <laughs> I see I see okay and so you performed at local venues or what if what's on your resume if you will thus far well um, I've done a, a number a number of various things like I've done various competitions and then I performed at the House of Blues a few times, which is awesome. And uh, over winter break, I had the pleasure of performing at a local ski resort, which is my favorite place to ski. Um, so they had me, and I was performing in a bar, and that was really fun. And then, um, you know, just various things here and there. I perform at the Santa Monica Promenade when I get the chance, which is also really cool. Well, very nice place to perform. And so you write your songs, correct? I, I write some of my songs, yes. Some of your? Okay. And uh, what are some of the songs that you write? Uh, hopefully the one that you gave me that I'll play on Tuesday, which will be tomorrow, uh, and that that's one that you've written as well? No, uh, no? I, that one I actually worked with a songwriter for, because um, okay. that was you know part of the whole big production theme. The songs that I write um, are much more acoustic, uh, are, and then they're, they just speak to my experiences and then, you know, things that I'm concerned with. And, you know, sometimes they're just like about having a good day and then other times it's something more serious. Um, but and they're, so, they're taken from your personal experiences. From my experiences, okay. so yeah. It's, it's so. not made up. A lot of songs are made up and they're original because people pretend that they went through a certain experience. <laughs> Pretend about what it would feel like to go through that experience and then write it down and sing about it. That's yeah. very common. But you actually, like, what are some of your favorite original tracks, would you say, that you've written about your stories? Um, well, my first song that I, like, hardcore went through and finished it, because I have a t nasty habit of starting songs and not finishing them. But one song that I, like, worked really hard on is a song about my sister. Um, I have a younger sister, and so that song was kind of just dedicated towards her and about, like, her experiences growing up. And then, you know, my other song that I write about are just about, you know, growing up in a, a smaller town and, um, you know, ha but going for your dreams and that type of stuff or, you know, frustrations that I've had. And there's the occasional, like, obligatory <laughs> romance <laughs> or course. relationship song, you know. You have um, to. You have to. Yeah, that's a strong emotion. Like, you know, there's days where I want to sing about that. Um, but, you know, a lot of it's just having to do with, like, living your life day to day and and how you approach that and how it feels, I guess. I see, I see. And so how about some of your idols? I know that Carrie Underwood probably pops into your mind when I yeah. say that. Yeah, um, I love Carrie Underwood. I think, for one, that she has an amazing voice. Um, and then for two, she's just a really great role model and really holistic and gorgeous, which not all role models are, but that helps too. Um, and I think that she's just done a really good job of, like, singing songs that have a good message and are pertinent to her image and then also, um, you know, just being out of the media and then being like, a, from what I know, a very good person. And then also, I also love Taylor Swift. I'm extremely jealous of her. I think we all um, love Taylor Swift. Yeah, who doesn't? Yes. Um, guilty pleasure for some, but still a pleasure <laughs> nonetheless. Very true. Um, very true. She's a sweetheart. Um, 
I mean, I don't know her. I wish I did. But from what I can tell, she's a sweetheart. And I think her songs really speak to people on a personal level. Like, they're very relatable. And that's something that I hope to achieve in my music. So, Do people compare you to Taylor Swift and Carrie Underwood? I, they do. Um, I'm happy when they do. Not all the time. Um, sometimes it's just based on looks because I'm also blonde. But then, you know, sometimes I'll cover their songs and then they're like, wow, you know, you totally remind me of her or whatever. And that's great. Like, that's no, I have not gotten any better compliment. Well, if, so. you, if you're covering their song, wouldn't you by default be reminding? If you <laughs> don't remind true. them, of it's true. It's true. You know, sometimes people reinterpret their songs or sometimes, um, you know, they'll try to take it in a different direction or sometimes they just sound completely different. But occasionally, I've, you know, I'll get comments or whatever that like wow you're just like her or like oh my gosh like your voice or you know whatever it is so because it's interesting though is because a lot of times folks compare folks to other people in the industry as if they are there's one direction to go and for your country rock your mold you have to be either taylor swift carry on to or someone in that direction but <laughs> in reality it's important to realize that you're adding something new you're bringing there's only one person you could ever be and that's carla robinson a lot of times people yeah. are like oh no i want to be the next taylor swift you know i'm going all the way with that or guys want to be a rapper or something like that and i say well if you aspire to be that person you will always fail because that person is that person yeah and they do it better than you that's right that's right that's right so yeah. what's, what's your take on that you feel like you're adding something new to uh to their repertoire if you will well for one thing uh, i don't have an accent <laughs> no, that's just true this so is true. i don't have a southern accent and that's probably a little bit uncommon in country rock um i'm from california and so i don't have the typical southern twang um you and do have a california type uh, twang, i yeah. must say <laughs> <laughs> so I've heard people tell me I have an accent, and I think that's ridiculous, but um, I don't think I do. I'm sure anyone will tell you that. But I think that um, part of me, like, I've done various music from different backgrounds. So I, you know, sang classical music, sing choir, and then I've done pop, and, and I think that that... Um, comes out in my voice and it's a little bit diversified in that regard. I mean, I don't, I can't do things like Whitney Houston, but um, I think that that differentiates me from Carrie Underwood, who sings more like the gospel sounding country, and then from Taylor Swift, who's more like the softer country. Like, I feel like I play a medium between the two and then I have the ability to do other sounds. So, how do you balance school, social life, family, and of course, your professional career that's emerging right now? It's difficult, and sometimes, you know, music does get pushed to the side, unfortunately, but um, I think, th for me, it's just planning ahead and, like, organizing my time. I'm very, like, into being organized and all that, and so that helps me a lot. And then, you know, just prioritizing, like, as much as um, I value my classes and value getting good grades, just, like, making music a priority is absolutely essential. And then, well, for me, it's I enjoy and I love doing it, so it's not too terribly hard to prioritize it, but it is, you know, making deadlines for myself, making um, goals, because when it, you know, you, when you yourself are working on your professional career and you don't have like an agent or like a manager that's keeping on your back, then you do have to like set, set standards for yourself. Like, oh, I'm going to do one clip a week or I'm going to write a song a week or whatever it is. Um, and I think it's just time management and, you know, knowing what really matters. Like m to me, music really matters. So do grades and so does everything else. But music really matters. So. And if you love it enough, which it seems like you do, it will always find a place in your life, which yeah. is always important. So yeah. anyway, Carla, thank you for coming on the show and good luck. Thank you. And once again, Carlo, we really do appreciate you making the trip all the way down to Annenberg. You know where it is, though, and <laughs> we had a good time having you. Come on, Conrad's Corner. Uh, we're going to play an exclusive track from Carla Robinson's repertoire. It's called A Life I Can't Live Without. And as you listen to this, if I might add something here, you know, a lot of folks do not have the gift that Carla does and a lot of other uh, top singers and songwriters in our uh, generation. And that gift is the uh, ability to achieve true harmony. And when you achieve harmony, Harmony, you're able to communicate whatever you're trying to say on a whole different dimension. It's the sixth sense or the fourth dimension or the fifth dimension, whatever you want to say it, but not many people can do it. I believe Carla can. You can make your own judgment right here and now on Conrad's Corner. Once again, this has been USC's only news radio talk show. We will be back two weeks from now. We're going to be recapping all of this great action. Be sure to check us out online at conradscornerusc.com. And uh, once again, this is Carla Robinson's A Life I Can't Live without have a very happy and safe spring break folks stay safe god bless and we'll see you around the bend Wait.